I study environments from about 420 through to about 250 million years ago. Mainly what I study and look at is those environments preserving fire and in particular fire in coal forming environments. I'd like to talk about the history of Illinois about 300 million years ago roughly, 310 to be uh, a little more precise. Then the area I'm going to talk about is this area of Grundy, uh, Will and Kankakee counties known as the Maison Creek area. Illinois at the time at which these Maison Creek fossils were deposited was a very different world. Uh, we were tropical, in fact we were right at the equator. So this was a tropical, ever wet, uh, swamp environment quite different from uh, the world we live in today. The plant life in Illinois at the time was rather different. There were giant calamites, uh, horsetails. We can actually use this to measure temperature of fires 300 million years ago. And we can use fossils like this and the distribution of charcoal in coals to look at uh, past fire events. We are currently in an extinction event, the sixth great mass extinction, and consequently we're interested in defining some of the environmental parameters that might have a bearing on the, the world that we live in. The Triassic-Jurassic mass extinction event 200 million years ago. Across this event 200 million years ago, CO2 increased something in the order of between 700 and 1,300 parts per million uh, by volume in the atmosphere. That equated to a roughly five degrees C uh, global temperature rise, mean annual global temperature rise. Uh, if we look at carbon dioxide in terms of the modern environment, we're currently at about 390 parts per million uh, CO2 in the atmosphere. And apparently still rising. So there have been five previous events not including this one which gives premise to this being a cycle that unavoidably occurs. Meaning that mankind is not responsible for this global warming climate shift we are in right now these elitists who have convinced you all that deforestation, fossil fuel consumption, natural resource mining and carbon emission usage has all been a scam orchestrated by the elite to keep the high price range revenue at the highest they could. Pumping you all of what you hold as valuable they provide the high paying, mining and refinery services needed to generate the wealth resource while supporting the financial endeavors of the anti-resource consumption companies that allow their propaganda that their data supports their reasons for protest and marketing a temporary deterrent as an easy fix for now solution, all the while pitting the public against an unavoidable scenario with superficial obstacles that make really no difference in a set cycle that cannot be stopped or diverted without becoming the threat themselves. Giving these elite bastards the chance to step back and claim their innocence compared to the real threat, the liberal public. 2. Break this all down to a more simple explanation. The 1% made up the data that supported the belief of global climate change being mankind's fault in order to get the financial clearance from the governments and the support of the public in order to financially scam and embezzle the money from everyone through these budget plans and allotments for government expenditures to save the planet from resource consumption that would lead to curbing the climate shift disasters that would occur knowing full well that there was no stopping what has occurred five times so far and base their projected data of upcoming and occurring disasters and their strength ratio and destructive outcomes on the data gathered from the previous extinction events records. You all have been scammed but it's hard to argue data that they have convinced everyone to believe is reliable with readings based on inaccurate mathematical theories that are constantly changing making accurate readings impossible using these inaccuracies to bend the outcome of the data to support their agendas while the rest of us suffer without supplies, food for our families, youth brought up in poverty so that they can continue to live in the rich Hamptons with spoiled children who grow up with the same sinister underhanded view on how to approach life like it's something to manipulate for themselves just like they're greedy, immoral on the inside but bleached clean moral values on the outside degenerate parents.
This is an emergency broadcast alert from the Civil Defense Early Warning Systems Network. This is not a test. I repeat, this is not a test. Please stand by for instructions from the United States Department of Defense. A nuclear threat has been projected as a highly likely situation and most likely will be approaching the West Coast with an estimated impact trajectory to hit the central California region of the Bay Area, San Francisco region. Please take only what is necessary for a two-week ration supply and proceed to these nuclear fallout shelter locations. San Francisco Moscone Center South, located near the fire exit door to the right-hand side of the exit area, you will find a maintenance door that leads down a long hallway with a large steel door at the end marked fallout shelter. Also beneath the parking garage at San Francisco City Hall, in the far back right corner of the parking garage is a door that leads to a nuclear fallout shelter designated for City Hall officials to take shelter in. The last one is located beneath the Golden Gate Bridge on the San Francisco side, facing the river. These locations are not listed on any publicly accessible records and has been kept from the public's knowledge for unknown reasons. This emergency alert has been made possible by your annoyingly cliché anonymous public service provider. Now please stand by for a word from the President followed immediately after this broadcast. This is not a test. I repeat this is not a test. The situation involving the southern border being overrun has made it highly likely that an attempted invasion from China will occur directly following within the next 36 hours. It has been known for some time now that Chinese operatives were using cartel members to pay people in Central America to storm and overrun the border to attract the attention of the United States military in order to attempt a distraction while they invaded from the Canadian. Central U.S. with a tactical strike assault on all coastal shoreline cities to divert the Missile Defense Network system for retaliation artillery and missile counterstrike programs. Be prepared. Be alert. Be anonymous. This message will repeat until the government shuts it down.